a very serious subject today, repentance. And I say very serious because this is a subject that is not taught and preached and practiced in your modern Laodicean church. I mean, after all, their saying is that God hates the sin and loves the sinner, and we're just hunky-dory great little doobies. Why would we need to repent? And when you dealt with people in the public ministry, however you do a public ministry, if it's a correct to the Bible, you'll find out you will get people angry when you even try to suggest that they sinned. Because they don't sin in America no more. They had an affair. They not being on favor, they just stepped aside. It was a fling. It was an error. And it's because of their color, their race, their brought up and you know their mother and their great great grandmother and all kinds of excuses that God won't take. Now when we look at repentance, look Matthew twenty one twenty eight. But what thinking? A certain man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go to the go work today in my vineyard. He, the son, answered and said, I will not. But afterwards he repented and went. So what we have is a situation here is, he said, no, I'm not going to do it. Don't want to do it. Don't have to do it. Not my right to do it. Not my job. Whatever it is, it was a no. We say no all the time to God. We say no all the time to the Holy Spirit. We say no to our parents. We say no to our spouse. We say no to our bosses. We say no to the authority. We got a bunch of Baptists, let me say that, and they will say no to the President of the United States. That's not my president. And the Bible clearly says you're to pray for the king and leader. Of your name, and they'll say, Well, we don't have a king. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're looking for excuses, aren't we? And it's mindful that the son was wrong because he repented and went. He knew that, you know what? When I told dad, I was wrong. He asked me to do something, and he repented. Anyway, so what is the repentance here? He's sorry. He made a wrong decision. And he went and did that which is right. Now see, you can have repentance. Oh, I'm sorry. And then do nothing about it. We'll see that in a moment. King Saul, many times, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And there are people, uh, they approach God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Did they mean it? King Saul, no. When David was caught with the adultery and murder, and Nathan approached him, and David went to God, I'm sorry, he meant it. David repented that he went to God and apologized. Well, see, repentance is not just, I'm sorry. We've got to understand what the biblical definition is. And here's a, you know, what sin did the son do? Well, you would say that he dishonored his father. He did not honor his father. He told his father no. 
when he should have told him yes. Think about it, Christian. Have you ever answered somebody of authority? Somebody of a loved one? Or a fellow Christian? Have you? I mean, it could have been a yes. I don't know the circumstance. But have you answered them to the fact is it was wrong? And you repented. You're sorry. Then you did that which is right. That's what the son did. He said, no, I won't go. Then he repented. He got sorry, remorse, and he went. Not only did he repent, but he had the fruits of repentance. Look at his brother. And he came to the second son, said, likewise, you know, go to my field of work. And he answered, said, I go, sir, well, respectful. And he went not. He wasn't sorry for lying to his dad. And then there's no remorse. Genesis 6. Genesis 6, 6. And it repented the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Jehovah. Would you think, would you even think, that God's a sinner. Would you even ever think that God would do wrong? And yet it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. And it grieved him in his heart. So when we look at the word repent, we think of sin. God here, who is sinless... And you know what? He has done something, made man. He says, you know what? I'm sorry I did that. It wasn't a sin. Because he's going to call for Noah. And that we have the sinless God. Without sin. And God repented. God had remorse. God was sorry. What was the action of God to his repentance here? Except for eight human beings and two and seven pairs, male and female. He's going to wipe the whole earth out. Exodus. Exodus 13. Exodus 13, 17. And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people Israel go, that God led them not through the way to the land of the Philistine, though that was near. For God said, at least prevention the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. Now what's this? Sorry that they left. There's no sin. Israel's exited out of, out of Egypt. And God could have sent them another way. He did not go through the Sea of Reeds. He did not go up to the Philistine. He went through the Red Sea. But God said, I am not going to take them this way. At least they repent. At least they become sorry. Remorse. Why did I do that? God, why did I make man? That son, why did I tell God no? And if you don't come to the realization 
of repentance. Why did I do that? Then there's no repentance. There are people who go up in the church and, and they are conceived, they are swindled, deceived, not conceived. They're deceived and swindled and, and you know, I'm going to sing 14 phrases just as I am. And they go up there and they boo hoo 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 and they say this prayer. And they die and go to hell. Well, then I repent. Then I say I was sorry. Yeah, you can say you're sorry, but is there a reason for the sorry? That son told his dad no. God said, I am sorry that I made man. Israel, God saying they will be sorry that they left Egypt. You can't just go to a prayer altar and say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, like Saul. There has to be a reasoning and a reckoning. Now here's no reckoning. Here is a, a proposal by God that if I do this, this is what they're going to do. But it shows for another biblical definition. I'm sorry. Remorse. Numbers 23. Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie. So that means Jesus Christ was not only God, not only was Jesus Christ man, which he is, Jesus was God and Jesus was man. Jesus never lied. So Jesus was God man. Jesus was man God. They should lie. Neither the son of man, born of Adam, that he should repent. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, Stylo. You said Genesis 6, 6, God repented. And you said he was sinless. And you say God's not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. So you're saying God does not have to repent. The circumstances of Numbers 23, 19 is Balak has hired Balaam to curse Israel. And Balaam has gone, I forget how many times right now, but in, in total, Balaam's gone three times. I don't know if this is the first, second, third, I forget. At least two or three times. Not the first. And after the first time, Balaam did not like that God and Balaam blessed Israel instead of cursed them. So Balak wants Balaam a second and third time. Hey, let's try this again. Maybe this time God will curse them. And what Balaam is telling Balak is God is not going to repent. God is not going to change. God's not going to say, oh, I'm sorry I blessed them the first time. Because of you, I will change. So in other words, what is happening in Numbers 23 19 is what God said. He's not ever going to take back. He's going to do it. The sinless word of God. And whatever God says he's going to do and does it, is he had not done it yet, he's not going to change what he said for anybody. You understand? That son said, Dad, no. He changed his mind and said, I'm going. God said, I, I'm sorry I made man, but spared Noah and his family. 
I mean, he judged the world, but he did not violate his words by saving Noah. And then when he let it, when Pharaoh let Israel go, I mean, hey, they might say remorse. But here the word of God stands. God, see, today we got this replacement theology that God is all finished with Israel. The church is the new Israel. No, oh, that's wrong. Because God told Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob from the 12 tribes, and I'm going to bless you for all eternity. And God's not going to repent because they rejected the Messiah. <laughs> God is not going to repent because they're persecuting the church. God didn't repent for his love for Israel when they persecuted the apostles. So God's not going to change His word, and there, you know, there's some some Christians, you know, they pray to pray that God will change everything for for their prayer. You know, we tell God what to do. Well, if what we tell God to do, and I said we, if it violates what God said, He ain't gonna do it. First Samuel. 1511. And we got here again. It repented me, God speaking, that I had set up Saul to be king. Like Genesis 6 6, here's the holy, sinless God, Jehovah. I am sorry, I have remorse for making man. Now God shows up in 1 Samuel 15. I am sorry I made King Saul the king of Israel. Have you ever done that? I mean, we're sinners. I have. There are plenty of things. I wish I'd never done that. Let me ask you, Christian. Sinner. Have you repented? If God will admit, hey, listen. I had remorse for something I did. And told us in the scriptures, the holy word of God. Should not you go to God, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We got to confess, repent, to be cleansed and forgiven. Now God needs no cleansing. God needs no forgiving. But if God, Jehovah, repented, said, listen, I'm sorry I did that. Now, with repentance of putting Saul as the king of Israel, what did God do next? He anointed David to take the throne. What had happened? Well, let's go back. The son. He said no. He repented, went back, and went back and did the work. Okay. He he. What did he do with his repent? He went back to work. What did God do after he said it repented me? It repented me that it made man. He drowned him out. Exodus 13 is, is something that it was conditional. Numbers 23 is God's not going to change, but here we back again. Now, what happens with this repent? King David, well, David's anointed king of Israel. Job. Book of Job, 42, verse 6. Now this is Job 
speaking to God outright. Wherefore I abhor, I extremely hate myself, and repent in dust and ashes. What is this? 42 chapters I've sinned against God, and more. I cried, baby, I complained, I boo-hooed, I cussed, I got angry, I wanted death, I given up, name them all. And he's kneeling before God, he says, I repent. I'm just, I'm just a human being. I'm just dust and ashes. Here's a repentance of, you know what, God? I ain't nothing at all. I'm surprised you're even listening to me. I'm even surprised. I know. But I am surprised that you're going to forgive me and cleanse me and never remember. How on earth, God, do you recognize me? And what am I? Dust and ashes. You know, you can blow on dust and ashes and blow it away. Women take a cloth and clean dust all around the house. Men get shovels in that and pick up the ashes and throw it out. Not God. God doesn't dust his creation. He doesn't shovel out his creation. That are his. Matthew 3. Matthew 3. Two. First time repent shows up in the New Testament. Say, repent ye for the kingdom of heaven, kingdom of heaven is at hand. At the preaching of John the Baptist, the first word that comes out of his mouth is repent. That's not the churches today. I don't know how many times I said repent when I preached on the street for six years. Turn or burn, repent or perish. I've been rebuked by pastors. I've been rebuked by Christians. What is repent? We've seen it. You are sorry. And yet you can use the word repent and not mean it. I mean, that's a picture of your, your correctional. I worked the correctional as a prison chaplain. Oh, they're sorry before the judge. Get them in the get them in the prison, the pods, the cells, and then they brag about their crime. Look at verse eight. Bring therefore. Fruits, meat for repentance. What, what's John asking him? You repented? Prove it. It's not works for salvation. As you said, that there's salvation, there's repentance, there's forgiveness. Now prove it. I'm going to tell you, I'll give you one illustration. Before I was saved, I was I, I stole money from my dad. After I was saved, I, I don't know how long, I sat down and wrote my dad a letter. My dad was the first one I preached to about hell. I sat down, wrote my dad a letter, said, Dad, I stole, I did this, and everything I done against him. You don't need to know. And I wrote in that letter, repenting, sorry. If you tell me how much money I owe you, if you tell me what it takes to make things right between you and me, I owe it to you. Now see, that was an atonement. 
My dad said, I forgive you. You don't have to do anything. But my dad could have said, you owe me $1,000. I would owe him 1000 He could have said, you owe me $1,000, but you better pay me 1500 I owe it to him. See, repentance is not always saying, boo-hoo-hoo-hoo, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. How do you make things right? What did that son do? He, he repented. What did he do to make things right? He went in the field and worked. God said, it repented me that I made man. What, what did God do? He spared Noah and his family. God said, it is sorry that I made King Saul. What did God do? He anointed David. And there are, there are hundreds more of repentance in the Bible. All right. Matthew 12. Matthew 12, 12, 41. 12, 41. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation. And shall condemn it. Because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. Oh, okay. Here's a repenting of the men of Nineveh. When Jonah preached. Let's go see what happened. Jonah 3. Jonah 3. Here's the preaching. Jonah began to enter the city a day's journey, and he cried. He said, yet 40 days, here's the message, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. That's the message. All right, here's the repentance. And Jesus said they repented. So the people of Nineveh believed God won. They didn't put their trust in the preacher. They put their trust in God. They didn't walk the aisle and say, oh, our preacher or our church. They walked the aisle or knelt down wherever they were for God, number one. Proclaimed the fast, number two. Put on sackcloth, number three. From the greatest of them, even to the least of them, whoever, whatever. So they repented, and their actions were, they believed God, they had a fast, they put on sackcloth, they are showing God their remorse, their atonement, was, look at us. We're down in the dirt. That's what they're doing. They're on their knees. You've seen the, the, the position, they're on their knees with their face on the ground. And they're wearing itchy, good sackcloth. And they haven't eaten. Again, for the word came unto the king of Nineveh, the preacher. He arose from his throne, one, laid his robe from him, two, and covered with sackcloth, three, and sat in ashes, four. At the word of the preaching of Jonah, the repentance of the king of Nineveh, he got off his throne, took off his royal clothing, put on the sackcloth, and he sit in ash like Job. Notice that? Now. And it caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by a decree or law. No American would follow this. You want a national revival? You want the, the president of the United States to proclaim, especially under a Democrat, decree a law? Your Republicans would disagree. Your Republicans would violate the law because it wasn't a Republican president. Decree of the king and his nobles, saying, let neither man nor beast, even the animals, Herd nor flock. Now this is what Jesus told us. Taste anything one. 
Let them not feed nor drink water. A complete fast. But let every man and beast be covered with sackcloth too. And cry mightily unto God, three. Let them turn everyone from his evil way, four. And from the violence that's in his hands, five. That's repentance. That's a national repentance. You want a national repentance? You want a national revival? You know what the, revi the true revivals that were in this country and England? The bars, the movie theaters were shut down and closed. Matter of fact, bars and, and cinemas were turned into churches. No man cheated on his way openly. The prostitutes hid. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger and we perish not? So Nineveh repents and they do all works of repentance to show God. Hey, we're serious. They're not trying to put it on for Jonah. Jonah's underneath a tree, angry as anything. They are saying, God, we are sorry. It'd be like a kid whose mother made cookies and mom said, don't touch the cookie. And he went in and stole the cookie. And his mother chastised him for stealing the cookie. After she said, don't take the cookie. Little boy goes off and he's sorry. And mom goes in the kitchen on the cookie sheet is a little Lego man. I don't know. Hot wheel car. Something. Where that cookie was. Mom calls in the son and goes, what's going on? He says, Mom, I'm sorry I took that cookie. All right, there's repentance. Why is there the little car or the Lego man on the... That's all I could get back. That's all I had. I can't give you the cookie back. Now, see, there was repentance. There, how do you know he was sorry? He made an offer, probably his favorite toy. In replace of the cookie I stole. God spared eight souls. The young man, the son, went out and worked. God set up king. Well, David would be king. Nineveh has fasted, sat in ashcloth, ash, sat in sackcloth. They're sitting in ashes. They're fasting. That's what I want to say. They are reaching out to God. And they're hoping God will repent. Verse 9. Now, watch this. Verse 10. God saw their works, works of repentance. That they turned from their evil way. And God repented of the evil. That he said he would do. He was going to destroy them. And he did it not. So God said you know what. I see their repentance. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to destroy them. But you said in Numbers 23, 19, that what God said, he's not going to repent. He said he's going to destroy them, and yet he repented, making Numbers 23, 19 void. No, no. Because you know what happens to Nineveh later on? I don't know the date. Nineveh will be destroyed. What God did is, 
he pre he pushed the date forward. God said what he would do. He's going to destroy Nineveh. They repented and got right. God said, okay, I'm not doing it now. That young man says, no, I'm sorry. And it took some time for him to get to the field and do. God said, I'm sorry I made man. He spared eight souls. It took a while before he destroyed man. God said, I am sorry I ever made Saul the king. It took a quite a while before David became king. God said, I'm going to destroy Nineveh. He repented. Later on, he'll destroy Nineveh. He said what he was going to do. 